In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create these custom shapes here, but we will continue on because one of the items I forgot eventually was what will you do, and it was based on the question, what will you do if you have a bar that is so narrow that it doesn't fit in there? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a unique dot at the very top with the value in there instead of putting the value in our bar because there is no space. So let's start to look how we can continue on making this specific circle with the value within it. So let's start to continue on and this is very important. This is basically based on a previous video that I made and there was a comment on it where it says, well, what do you do if you have a very narrow value here? Can we show it in a different format? And the answer is of course, yes. So what I'm going to do is, and this is part two of it on how to create a custom element, we're going to create that final part on that or at least cover that specific question. So the first thing what we need to do is we need to go back to our bar box item. So if you don't understand anything here or you don't have this code, please watch this video here, part one. This is basically part one, covers it all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to solve this issue here. For example, here we have this item, but this will be very narrow. Or let's make it even much more narrow than right now. Let's make it 0 0.1. So it's hardly visible. And if you go like this, you can see what is happening. The tooltip overlaps it, but also the item itself is just not showing here or the number is just doesn't fit. So we should have a different structure for that. And that's a real good question. I didn't realize it when I was making the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down and we're going to say, well, hold on, we're going to change our structure. So we have this here. And what we can do is we have this if statement that says here if this is true and active in this case we want to draw a structure here we have this this structure and now what I'm going to do is we can say here, if this is active and probably what I want to have as well is if there is a specific height on this so let's see can we make a additional if statement I guess we can make an if statement here and I'm just wondering if this should be it. Well, begin path is important. The black color is important. And I have here the rectangle. I guess everything from this point on to here should be separated. So what we're going to do here is a simple if statement. Say if. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say if the, uh, I guess, the height of the metadata, which is this one here. And let me just show you, if I do a console log, we will be able to see what is the height. I'm going to save that. Open up the developer tab. If I hover over it, you will see here a specific height. You can see here this height is far too narrow. How many pixels do we need? Well, we need at least 12 pixels. But let's say if the height is 20 pixels or less or below 20 pixels, we want to change this number, put it here up. We put a nice circle and within that circle, we will place that. And if it's just big enough like this, then we allow it like that. So what we're going to do here, we can see here the height that already indicates it. So we're going to create here an if statement with the height. And we're going to say if this height is larger or equal to 20 pixels, in that case, copy this area, put it in there. And then there we are. Save that. If we refresh now, we can see here, all right, this one doesn't work because it's a black color here. Maybe we should change the color for that one. Uh, but if I see here, you can see here now, here it just doesn't respond anymore. And that is correct because we create an if statement and we filter it out. And maybe if I do here white, you will see here it will work nicely on that one. Oh, sorry. This is probably maybe here the color itself. This one. Let me just make this white so you can see it. So just visible, that makes more sense. White, save. All right, all right, all right. So now this works, then here of course doesn't work. This structure, I do realize that we could basically reuse this consistently, but we need to have a different position on this one. So I'll just leave it, I can, we can just duplicate this or not even, we have to make a slightly different structure of this or another if statement. I'm doing it like this. 
it's better to do an if statement like this instead of an if else. The more you nest it in, the more complicated it becomes. So that's why the lesser of these, the better. Anyway, uh, we're going to say if it is lesser. In that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And I'll just say this one will be black for now. Save. Refresh. So if I go here, all right. But this one here, you can see this one is black. It just shows it. So that works, but now what I want to do is I want to have a shape up. I want to have a nice circle. So it's new, new. so we're doing something slightly different. So I'm going to say here, uh, ctx dot fill style, and this fill style will be black, and then this eventually needs to be white later on. So then what I want to do is I want to say here, ctx dot arc. For arc, we're going to use six variables that we need to insert. The x position, the y position, the radius, and we have here the uh, circle starting angle, and then the circle ending angle, I guess, angle start, angle end, and then we have here counterclockwise true or false, so counter, counterclockwise. So in this case, this one is always false in our case. Just put them false. This here, the angle, we're going to play around with that by creating a new constant just outside here. We'll be needing this, and I realize we can just put it even out here so we don't do it in the loop. So it just doesn't have to reload itself multiple times. So it's a constant angle, and I'm going to explain why I'm doing this. I'm going to say math.pi divided by 180 degrees. So what is this really? Well, we know a circle, a full round circle, is 360 degrees. But math.pi, or at least 1 pi, equals a half circle. So 2 pi equals 360. So that's just what we're doing here is we're going to calculate the math pi and divide it by 180 degrees. So we have an angle or a degree at a time. And this makes it easier for us to say full circle later on. So in here, all we have to do now is here we have the starting angle. We're going to say 0. And then what we want to do is 360 multiplied by angle. That's it. 360 degrees. So once we have this, we have here the x and y position and we have the radius. So what will be the x and y position? Well, in this case, we know the x position will be this. So I'm going to copy this, put it in here. But the y position will be basically whatever is here plus x amount. And what we do know is that if the height is below 20, uh, 20 pixels, in that case, we have this. So we know that this height here is absolutely minimum. So what we can do with this then is, well, to make it really easy, we're just going to say here, we have, uh, where's the base? We know this meta base, and the meta base is basically the baseline here. And we say just plus 50 pixels, and then we'll be fine, because we know it should never be more than 20 pixels. So if we put it at 50 pixels up, we will always be safe. Or safe. So I'm going to copy that. For the y, we're going to put in there, and then we say uh, plus one. We don't do plus, we do minus. Why minus? Because we're going up in pixels, and if we go up, it's going down. It decreases amount of pixels because up here is zero. This would be whatever the height would be. So if I do this, then we have to calculate the radius. The radius would indicate from the center of the circle to the right or to, to the outer side of the circle. How many pixels is that? So it's not from one side of the circle to the other side, no from the center. So if I want to have a 20 pixel width from left to right of a circle, I need to have 10 pixels because 2 times 10 would be 20 and that would be the left and right part. So if I do this, refresh here, now I move over. All right, interesting. Doesn't draw yet. Why it doesn't draw? Simply because it forgot a specific command, which is, let's search for that one here. Um, I guess it's not even in here. Anyway, I'm going to say here, ctx, the fill for this and that will work so if I refresh this we should see now all right and I realize we're somewhere off on our horizontal level our vertical level is fine but our horizontal level you can see here is off so we have this index here but why is our index on our arc data index dot Oh, all right, my bad. So what is this here? This, of course, is the number. Sorry, this is really bad of mine from my side. 
or from my end because I need to grab this one here. I was grabbing this because I thought this would be the number of the value. Now this is the number of the value of the label itself, which is number four, five or six pixels. So I need to get this one here, which, which gives us the exact coordinates of Saturday. So if I save this, refresh, there we are. You can see here 10 pixels might be too narrow. I'm going to make this uh, bigger. 15 will make it 30 pixel full circle. That will fit nicely the fonts here, but maybe if we are really satisfied, we can do 25. We get a decent circle here. All right. If we do that, what I want to do then at least here, increases a little bit more. Let's make this 20, that's fine. So we push it up a little bit more and then we're going to put in the value in here. So how do we get the value in here? Well, simply this. We have this one here, we have the base, all right, minus half, no. Now the base is just this. I'm going to replace this here, no more half. Just like that, there we are. All right, now you don't see it because the font is black. Convert it to white, save. And there we are. Now we have all of these here, absolutely phenomenal. We have this white, this one white, and there we are. So this is basically how you can play around with it. And of course you could do so many things with this. This is really fun once you understand how to do this because you can draw anything you want on your chart. And this covers basically the tiny issue that I overlooked when I made the first part of this video. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to do some more customization, there are so many things we can do. I have also many different videos about that. It's for example, this one here. This is a good exercise as well, learning how to make a square, making these weird shaped lines. And then you have these dotted line as well. Playing around with as many different elements in one shape is a good exercise as well to learn. Once you learn this, you probably can draw almost anything you want on chart.js or in the canvas.